Good day, everyone. Uh, today, let us have the introduction to magnetism. Now, the question of how important is electric motors? Now, motors are very extremely important in our modern day life. The vacuum cleaners requires motor, dishwashers, computer printers, and all, most all of the appliances and gadgets requires motors. So therefore, motor is very important in our everyday life. We can, we can feel it uh, convenient if we have it. Now the question is why electric motor works? Now the, there, are, there are very important components of the, of the motor. Why is it working? We have the, take note that almost all of the motor have the permanent magnet or it can be converted into the coil because the coil that can provide another or, or magnetic field. So the, 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 impor the importance here of the permanent magnet, the north and south, generates magnetic field. So the magnetic field is very important in the motor. Another thing is we have here the armature. The armature is the rotating device and it composed of the uh, magnetic wire that carries current from external source. And of course, the combination of the brass and commutator, the brass is actually the connection from the external load, and the commutator is actually connected in the armature, rotating with the armature, and it forms C. The purpose of this is changing the direction of the uh, direction of the current within the coil. So, in the theory, when whenever there is a current that flows in a, a loop conductor, it generates magnetic field and it has the dipole moment. The dipole moment will interact to the external fields. So, that's why it rotates. The commutator and brass are the strategy in order to convert the or change the direction of the current within the magnetic field. So changing the current is actually leading the motor to run continuously without stopping until we have the unless uh, or we as long as we have the external source that supplies the armature. Okay. Now if we if you want to explore on this uh, seriously. Then, of course, we need to study electromagnetism. Electro means electricity. Magnetism is in the field of magnetic magnetism. So, combining the two, we call it as electromagnetism. Why electromagnetism? Because motor requires electricity and it produces magnet, then it rotates. So, that's it. No? So, we badly need to study electromagnetism. But before going to that, we should know what is magnetism, the definition itself. So what is magnetism? This is a physical phenomena that are referred to as magnetic field. So anything that speaks on the magnetic field is under the topic of magnetism. It has the ability to attract and repel is a so-called magnetic fields of that area. So the study of that magnetic field is in the formalism of magnetism. Currents in the conductor, as I told you in the DC motor, if we have the current that flows into the magnetic wire, and also the magnetic moments, which is actually the result of the current in the conductor, and its slope area, the area where the magnetic was formed, the, 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 the armature was formed, it generates magnetic moments. And that magnetic moments will interact to the external. Okay? And it will rotate. So therefore, if you have a greater amount of magnetic moment, of course, you are increasing the magnetic field. So the magnetic field can be increased depending on the amount of current. So if you increase the current, you increase the magnetic moment and you also increase the magnetic field of that conductor. And this effect, okay, this 
result will interact to the other magnetic moments or magnetic field in the surroundings. So the interaction is very much, very much important in the field of physics because if there is interaction, there must be technology will follow. Okay, so the question is what is magnetic field? Magnetic field is a vector quantity. This is just like an electric field. But they are different, completely different to each other because the electric field is the distribution of charge. But this magnetic field is the distribution of magnetic effect. So meaning, quantifying the magnetic effect is actually the magnetic field. So magnetic field is a vector field that describes the magnetic influence of a moving charged particle. This magnetic field can influence a moving charged particle. Whenever there is a moving charged particle and you have the magnetic field, that moving charged particle will experience a force. And this is true also to current in the conductor. If the current flows into the conductor, then it must experience a force and also a magnetic field. And so with the magnetic materials. There are materials that has the ability to uh, attract and repel because it has uh, nature in magnetic field. Then that's it. It provides magnetic field. Because it is a magnetic material. So the magnetic field can be obtained using the moving charge, can be using in a moving current or a current in the conductor, or maybe in a magnetic materials. A moving charge in a magnetic field experiences a force. So if there is charge uh, travels in the presence of the magnetic field, then that charge experiences a force. The question of how much force, then that will be the next video next to this and that force is always perpendicular by its own velocity and magnetic field which means that if you have the velocity of that particle and we have the magnetic field perpendicular to that is the magnetic force and we will calculate the amount of force its magnitude and direction okay so the magnetic field can be produced in two ways so if you want to produce magnetic field, there are two ways to do it. One, we have the permanent magnet. Of course, there are materials that has the, uh, by nature, it, it's magnetic material. So therefore, we call it as permanent magnets. It will not change. It will provide constantly, unless broken by, by temperature, by, by changing climates, by changing. But... At that instant, the magnetic field is the same. Okay? Then another way to provide a magnetic field is you have to form electromagnet. What is electromagnet? Uh, we provide a current in the conductor, form it a loop. If you do it, if you introduce a current within the loop, it generates magnetic moment. And that magnetic moment is a factor to provide magnetic field at the center of that loop. Which means that if you have a loop, when you see loop, it is a magnetic wire. A magnetic wire is a wire that a conductor which has coated by by a transparent material, a transparent insulator. So if you let the current flows on the uh, conductor, then form a loop, it can be single turn or many turns. The more turns you have, more magnetic moments. The more magnetic moments, more magnetic field at the center of that. So therefore, you can generate, we can interfere, no? we, can, we can reduce, you can increase the magnetic field depending on the amount of current that you allow or the amount of voltage that you use or the amount of current that passing to the conductor. Okay, so it generates magnetic moment. Now, in a motor, why is it more rotate? Because of the ma magnetic moment and its magnetic field. The magnetic moment will interact to the external magnetic field. So, the combination of the magnetic field from a permanent magnet or another electromagnet 
will interact to the magnetic moment of the electromagnets. Okay? So, we, we call this electromagnets because we have the electricity and it provides magnetism. Okay, then uh, let's have the permanent magnet. Now, permanent magnet is every drive, no? We, we observe this during our childhood until now. If we have, take note, if we have uh, magnetic material, we call it as permanent magnet, then one of that is north, the other is south. If we have another magnetic material, one of that is north, the other is south. If you let the north facing to the south, then according to theory, the two will attract. And if you perform the experiment, it's true. If, if that two materials will be attracted to each other by magnetism or magnetic effect, then uh, it means to say that the north and south are facing each other. Opposite magnetic pole. So the north means the north magnetic pole. East means the south magnetic pole. So if the north and pole are facing each other, it will be attracted. Vice versa. Okay? Then, what if if we have, we uh, let the two magnets face on its the same pole? Then, by theory and by experiment, very simple experiment, it will repel. So, the, they interact. No? And it is a repulsive interaction. While this one is an attractive interaction. Different pole, the simple the simple uh, magnetic pole repel. So, south-south repel. Also, north-north will repel. Okay. Now, if we have a magnetic material and we have a non-magnetic material like nails or whatever metal, not all metals have the ability to, to magnetize, meaning there are only selected materials that has the ability to uh, perform magnetism or magnetic effect. So, if we have a non-magnetic material but we have here magnetic material, this and magnetic will be attracted. So, regardless, north or south, all non-magnetic materials will be attracted to each other. So, once the magnetic material attached to the metal or to the, to the magnetic material, then these metals, these nails, will gain a magnetic ability, which means the, the non-magnetic will acquire a magnetic effect from the magnetic material. That's why if you do this, if you perform this experiment like this, you can notice that the nail attached to another nail and so on and so forth. Why? Because at that instant, the nails are gained, will gain a magnetic effect until it will lose in the lowest part because of force, but stronger in the closer uh, distance. So the, the far, the farther, the, the smaller magnetic effect, the closer, the greater. So, these are all non-magnetic materials, the nails. Now, if you remove that from the permanent magnet, then it will lose in space the magnetic effect because they are non-magnetic effect. Non-magnetic material cannot sustain the magnetic effect on its material. Some will lose gradually. Some are rapid. But the idea is all of them were lost from itself. So in this, there are three laws of magnetic effect. Different magnetic pole attract each other. South-south, south-north, north-south. The same pole, magnetic pole, repel each other. South-south, north-north. But the non-magnetic metals always attracted by a magnetic materials. So this is actually the same as the law of electricity. The law of electricity says that uh, different charges attract. Positive, negative attract. Vice versa. Same charges repel. No, positive, positive charge. Negative, negative, repel. Now, non-charged materials are always attracted by charged materials. So, they are almost quite. But this is, again, we cannot compare these two because these are different in discipline. This is talking about magnetic effect. While in our previous... Uh, we call it as electrostatic effect. Okay, so this we have we call this as permanent magnet. So if we have this magnet, actually it forms these curling lines. We call this as magnetic field lines. And notice that the magnetic field lines that produce okay 
from this permanent magnet, the magnetic field is moving from north then curling towards the south. Inside, this will travel, the magnetic field will continuously to flow in this direction, meaning there is a kind of lines, magnetic effect. We call that as magnetic field lines. So the arrow is coming from the north towards the south. Now, if you recall this in our previous topic, this is quite similar of the electric dipole. With this electric dipole, positive charge, negative charge, then it travels from positive towards the negative. Because in the positive, the electric field is away. But in a negative charge, the, the field is towards the charge. So, this is just like what we seen in our previous topic in electrostatics. Okay, but... Take note that it happens only if we have the two charges that interact. Now, if we have the charges are the same, then it will move away from each other. The, the magnetic field changes. Okay? Now, if we remove one of the charges in electrostatics, then it will align regularly in a point charge, distribute outward for positive, inward for negative, isolated. So we call that as a mono, mono charge. Okay? Dipole means two. Two, the same charge, magnitude, but different in polarity. Okay? Now, the question is, would it be possible to have a monopole? This is dipole. Huh? Di two, polar magnetic, di di uh, magnetic poles, the north and south. Now, what will happen if, uh, by the way, these are the field lines, of course. We call this as a north magnetic pole and this is south magnetic pole. Now, what if, uh, but, uh, let's have this one. So, why is it that we have these uh, field lines? So, actually, these field lines can be constructed using our compass, compass that we use in, uh, in all uh, in, in surveying or whatever uh, because this is this guides you the if you have a compass the compass needle will pointing towards north so if you want to go with north then you have to follow if you move towards south then follow that because it will align always okay to the north because uh, we have the north magnetic pole and we have the south magnetic pole in earth also so if you place a compass at that point then this will align tangent to this line actually so meaning if you want to construct this one put it that in that place then you can notice that the needle of red at repel to the red but it was attracted by the red which is north and this is south so this is north and this is south and this north attracted to this one so that's why it aligns in that direction so meaning the direction of field, magnetic field, is towards the north. So, at that point, we have this compass, the magnetic field is in this direction. Now, if we transfer that compass here, then it aligns in that configuration, tangent to this curve. So, meaning, if you remove that, then it forms magnetic field in the direction of the north. Then we have, we have also this one. If we have this, since this red color is pointing towards right, then... We have that magnetic field. Now, if you rotate all of this, you can create this magnetic field lines. So, at that point, the magnetic field is tangent to that curve. So, if you come, if you travel all points in this surroundings, then you can form this magnetic field lines. Okay. So, let's going back to the question is what if I break this two? The question is. Will the will will the north stay at north alone without south and this one south? Uh, if we cut the cut the bar magnet into two pieces equally, what is north? Other south? Will this stay in north always? North alone, south alone. If you do it, if you do it, it is not true that this is north because in theory. This will adjust to each other, meaning the one half will be divided into another half, and one of that is north, 
and the other is out. Also with the other part, it will adjust by itself. So if you cut again, it will adjust. In other words, for a permanent magnet, there is no such thing as mono magnetic pole. There is no mono. It is always a die. It should have the north and it should have the south. You cannot separate the north from south because it is by nature that the magnetic material contains the north and south. Okay, so if you remove it, then take note that this is the magnetic field produced by this is because this is north, this is uh, the direction of the magnetic field is towards the south. Okay, now if you notice this in a in, in, uh, take note that this one again this will rotate to this but for the interaction between the two magnetic materials north interact towards the south okay so that's why uh, if we place that in a motor uh, motor no DC motor two magnets then it will pro provides magnetic field so this is if you want to have a magnetic field then just place two magnets opposite pole facing opposite pole because if you let this if you let this uh, north pole at this position and the south in the opposite side then you don't have magnetic field in this direction if you want this magnetic field to be at that point then it should be different pole okay now as i said a while ago that the earth has the north geometric pole the Earth's rotation axis. So actually, not exactly, no, but more or less. No. But take note, okay? We have also the south geometric pole. But take note that if we place compass here, out on the surface or outside from this Earth, then the compass. If you have this compass, this will align towards north. So if this red of the compass align towards north, then it follows. Now you are pointing to the north geometric geographic pole. So you are now leading. If you follow that needle direction, you will arrive at the north pole of the Earth. So what does it mean? In the north geometric pole, at that point, we call it as the south magnetic pole. So in the north magnetic pole, na a presence of south magnetic pole. Why south? Because the needle of the compass was attracted. Okay? So the, the magnetic south in the north is called as the north geometric pole. So, please do not confuse on that. We use the geometric, north geometric pole in, in the maps, no? But in terms of magnetic effect, that at that point, there is a presence of south magnetic pole. Why? Because the compass was attracted. So if you notice previously, if you do it also in, in by experiment using the magnet, placing the compass, then you will aware that the needle pointing towards the uh, towards the magnetic. If it is if, if that will be repel, then it is north. If it will attracted, then it is south. Okay, so then uh, we are done with the permanent magnet. Here comes the electromagnet. Remember that the permanent magnet generates magnetic field. Now, what about electromagnet? Will it generate magnetic field? Of course, yes. According to Hans Christian Ørsted, in 1777, and he died 1851, Danish uh, physicist and chemist discovers that the current in a conductor wire creates magnetic fields regardless of what is the form of the conductor as long as you allow the current to flow in the conductor it will provides magnetic fields okay so a uh, simple experiment was done we have this conductor and we have this supply so this is positive negative termi terminal remember the current will flow from negative towards positive but conventionally current will flow from positive towards the negative so the current direction is this one now at the bottom of this device of the system uh, Hans Christian Rosted placed a compass and it was observed that 
the needle was deflected. Okay? Deflected in this direction. Okay? Then, he also tried to reverse the supply, meaning reversing the current direction. He noticed a reverse deflection also. So, in that uh, result, he explains that there must be a magnetic field in the conductor. So, in the presence of current that flows into the conductor, there is a deflection of the compass. So, therefore, this must be a magnetic effect, magnetic field. If, you, if he cut the current that flows into the circuit, then the needle was aligned parallel to the conductor. But if he allowed the current to flow in the conductor, needle was deflected. So, and he reverses the direction. He observed the reverse direction also of the needle. So, therefore, with that result, he says that there must be a magnetic field. And that magnetic field is dependent on the direction of the current. And also its magnitude. He increased the, 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 the current. He observed the greater deflection of the needle. He provided less current blowing the, the conductor. He less he, he uh, observed a least deflection of the of the uh, needle. So therefore, the current is proportional to the magnetic field. Now the the question is, what's the direction of the magnetic field? Now to answer that is he formed another another experiment. In this form, he observed the one point of the conductor and placed a compass here that surrounds in this plane and he noticed the curling direction of the magnetic field. So in other words, there is a magnetic direction of the magnetic field because of the fact that in this horizontal conductor it reverses but in this one he noticed that it is a curling. So uh, and he said also that you can use your right hand roll. You can you can align your thumb towards the direction of the current, then curl it, the curl of your fingers will be the direction of the magnetic field. Okay? So this is actually the experiment. And this is the, uh, this is the starting point. After the uh, experiment of Hans Christian Rosted, the electricity and magnetism was combined into one discipline. Because there must, he said, that there must be a magnetic effect in electricity. Then vice versa, in electricity, when you have a magnetic effect, there must be electricity. So we call that as, the principle is electromagnetism. This is the first time or the starting date wherein the electricity and magnetism was combined into one discipline. Now, if you allow the current to flow into conductor and provide magnetic field, we call this as electromagnet, which means that you can provide magnetic field, field in an electricity or elect, uh, current that flows into the conductor. Okay? So, again, we have this illustration. If we have this conductor moving up, and we align the magnetic, uh, the compass in the direction of the conductor, and at this time, we don't have yet the current. Current is zero, so it is aligned. Now, if you allow the current here by putting external load, higher potential, low potential at this point, so current will flow upward. So if we have the current which is non-zero, then this will be deflected in that direction. Okay? So that's it. Now, if you reverse the current, which means in this direction, I call this as negative. This is negative. Sorry. Reverse the current. This should be less than zero. So that the current will reverse. This one will reverse also. This is actually the result of Hans Christian Orsted. In horizontal conductor, we call that in, the, in your experiment, you will be performing experiment to verify this. Uh, uh, we call it as galvanoscope, no? and we use the improvised one. Okay, so if you increase the current, you can see the increase of deflection here. Okay, then again, as I've said, this is your experiment. If you will perform this using the uh, improvised galvanoscope, wherein we have a single turn few turns and mini turns and we have the compass underneath and we have this external supply voltage we connect the positive and negative at this one 
then we are the current to fluid conductor and we will observe the uh, deflection of the compass and we will do it in few turns a single turn few turns and many turns of course the hypothesis is if you are in the in the many turns then you can expect a greater deflection so we call this as large compass okay so uh, you can you can uh, use this during our our experiment now to verify the curling of electric field by Hans Christian Rosted we use this setup we call this as Ampere's low stand wherein we have this conductor penetrate to the to the this body this is a block of wood then this will move towards upward so this is connected now if you allow the current to flow from positive this negative so current will flow upward in this conductor and we have this small compasses that uh, ready to detect the current that flows into this compass then or this this conductor then you can notice the deflection of this uh, compass then with that result you can verify the curling of the magnetic field in the conductor so by by right hand roll just place your thumb upward then curl it in this direction okay then the current flows the direction of curl is the magnetic field so these are the experiments procedure that you will verify the experiment of Hans Christian or still also okay so uh, again by right hand roll if the current flows from here towards then use your thumb stretch your thumb in the direction of current then curl your fingers the curl of your fingers will be the magnetic field so this is in three dimensions you can construct this in 2d now it's hard for us to look in three dimensions sometimes but if you convert this into 2d you can do it this way this one current conductor is flowing so this is now the current conductor and this dot prod that uh, symbol here signifies that the the magnetic field is towards you okay so the upper part the upper part of your conductor the magnetic field is towards you but the lower part of the conductor the, con the, the magnetic field is living away from you so therefore the upper part towards you now once you have the bottom part of the conductor is tend to move away from you that's why there is a circulation so therefore this drawing in three dimension can be converted into into two dimensions by the way the, that means the arrow that towards you so this is now the arrow pointing you while x is the bottom of the arrow that the, the bottom of the arrow living away from you so take note that the arrows have flights just like a dart pin that the dart pin we have the tip which represents the dot here and the x means the flight of tight forms across so you see the bottom of the, the flight here but this one the the dart pin is towards your eyes and this part is towards away from you so the the magnetic field is rotating so this is how to convert the 3d to 2D. This is very important in our in our previous uh, the incoming topics because you will be calculating the force. So we need this this one conversion. Okay, now what will happen if I loop? I I I let the conductor form a loop, which means that the current will flow in it. Then what will happen to the magnetic field? The magnet magnetic field will enhance, meaning at this point. We have only single magnetic field but if we loop that we are collecting the same amount of magnetic field but in more numbers electric fields are found at the center of the loop so if you want to increase the amount of the magnetic field or if you want to confine a magnetic field you have to loop it that's why motors are made of winding of conductors why because we want to collect the the what the uh, magnetic field okay so the advantage of having this is this is more magnetic field compared to that more magnetic field more more technology that we can form 
Okay? Now, this is only single turn. Now, what will happen if I rotate it again with the same current? Remember, uh, the current is the same because you have you're connected it to the external load. So, you have to connect positive, negative, then current is the same. If you loop it again, if you have extra length of the loop, loop it in a multiple turns, then you are multiplying the same current I. So, the advantage of many turns is you are increasing the current. You are increasing the, num the number of turns or the number of I that present on that conductor. So, if you have more current, remember in, in Hans Christian Rosted experiment, more current, more magnetic field. So, in other words, if you lift this turn in many turns, then we call this a multiple turns or many turns, coil now, we call this coil, then this current here, take note, is I. So, all, all conductor here, if you count this, how many turns you have, you have done, then that's the number of current that passes through this loop, meaning it increases the magnetic field. That's why the motor is not only a single loop, it should be a multiple loop. And they, they use a smaller conductor. Why? Because if you have a small conductor, you can wind it more. Remember, for every loop, the same current you have done. Okay, so this current is the same as current, but this is more loops. But this provides more magnetic field compared to this. Okay? So, that's it. We call this as coil. Coil, because you are forming mini turns. Okay, so, again, because of that, forming a loop, you can, there is a so-called magnetic moment generated on that, at the center of that loop. And that magnetic moment, mu, is actually can we obtain the direction because mu is a bit torus you can use your right hand rule the direction of your look at this one the arrow will be your curl of your fingernails and the th thumb will be the direction of your mu magnetic moment okay so in this case if you compare this to this is much greater than compared to this this is much greater compared to that why because many turns we call this as magnetic dipole moment or sometimes call this as magnetic moment. They are the same. And this magnetic moment is actually a function of current and the area of the loop. Meaning, if you increase the current, you're increasing the dipole moment. And you are, if you're increasing the area, of course, you're increasing also the mu. Theoretically. Now, if you, have, you increase the amount of mu, you are increasing also the amount of magnetic field that surrounds to this loop. Of course, we need greater magnetic field. All you need to do is to increase the magnetic moment. Increase the magnetic moment is to increase the current. You cannot, uh, no need to increase the area. If you, no need. All you need to do is to increase the current. So do it that in many turns. Okay? That's it. So this is now the answer how the simulator works. So we have this permanent magnet. Again, and we have this coil representing only single turn, but it can be represented with many turns. So we all have this external source, DC. So this is a DC motor. And we have this brush, and this is the commutator. The commutator is attached to the uh, rotating element. We call this as a rot uh, uh, we call this as armature. Okay? This is an arm armature. And we have this commutator within the armature. Many it rotates. So notice that this is formed a C. So the current will move, connect this one, then once connected on this C, first of the C, the current will travel on this, okay? Now, if this will transfer this one, so the current will reverse. So the purpose of commutator and brush is to reverse the current. So if you reverse the current, again, that's the reason why motor works. So in this case, because this permanent magnet, notice, remember that the, electric, the magnetic field is coming from north towards the south. And we have the electromagnet. The electromagnet provides mu. Okay? This is mu. And this is a factor of the current that flows on its area. But this one will reverse. In that case, it is upward. But in 180 degrees, this will transfer in the opposite direction. So, therefore, and this mu will attract to magnetic field direction. So, this will be attracted, rotating towards the magnetic field. Because... The one nature of the 
dipole moment, the dipole moment will attract theoretically towards the magnetic field. Okay? So, the moment it is attracted, then it remember that the current will change for every 180 degrees. So, for 180 degrees, more than 180, it will reverse in the opposite direction, then cycle continues. So, the purpose of commutator and brass are very important, played a special role on the uh, on the DC motor system. Okay, so the details of this uh, actually can be found in, in the next succeeding topics. So the next topic of this is how much magnetic force on a moving charged particle. Then followed by the next another topic is what will happen if we have the current that travels into the conductor? How much force? On the experiment? Then we form a loop. So we started with introduction, then we moved to the single charge, then mini charge, and so on, until we understand why motor works. And after that, we, start, we will study also, also how much magnetic field that the conductor produces in space. Okay, so that's all for today. So thank you. Good luck. Study. Don't forget to read and study the topic. Thank you.